Welcome back to Military Forces Unleashed. Today we're diving into a quiet but seismic shift in global defense, Australia's coming nuclear reckoning. There's no official law yet, but behind closed doors, Canberra is drafting what could become the Naval Nuclear Power Safety Act, a framework expected in 2025 that would lay the legal foundation for Australia's first nuclear-powered submarines under AUKUS. This isn't about nuclear weapons, it's about nuclear propulsion and the fact that Australia has zero experience regulating it. The proposed law would create a new Australian Naval Nuclear Power Safety Regulator, tasked with overseeing everything from radioactive materials to submarine maintenance. And here's the kicker. Anyone involved in regulated activities, welders, engineers, even support staff near nuclear zones could be classified as an authorized person. This isn't just red tape, this is Australia's first step into the nuclear age, and it could make or break the entire AUKUS submarine plan. So what counts as a regulated activity? Under international nuclear safety models, like those in the US and UK, it covers three big buckets. Facilities, like submarine piers at HMAS Stirling or the new naval base in Adelaide, Submarines, whether they're Australian, American, or British, if they're nuclear-powered, they're under scrutiny. Materials, including spent fuel, reactor components, and propulsion systems. That means plugging a U.S. Virginia-class sub into shore power, storing spare reactor parts, or even transporting nuclear components all fall under this future regulator's microscope. The goal? Safety and non-proliferation modeled on 70 years of U.S. and U.K. nuclear naval operations. But the side effect? A regulatory avalanche. Suddenly, hundreds of contractors, suppliers, and service providers face nuclear-grade compliance, not because they're handling reactors, but because they're part of the ecosystem. Enter the Nuclear Safety Management System, NSMS, the backbone of compliance. Every company or individual deemed an authorized person will need to implement it. And one of its core requirements? ISO 19443 certification. This isn't just ISO 9001 with a nuclear sticker. ISO 19443 is the global gold standard for nuclear supply chains, used by Rolls-Royce, BAE Systems, and U.S. defense contractors. It demands traceability, quality control, and safety culture baked into every process. But here's the bottleneck. Certification takes 18 to 24 months, and qualified auditors are extremely rare in Australia. Right now, there are fewer than five individuals in the country who meet the international criteria to conduct these audits under AUKUS guidelines. That's a massive choke point. Without auditors, there's no certification. Without certification, no one gets near a submarine. For giants like ASC, BAE Systems, or the UBH Group, this is a chance to dominate. They're already aligned with nuclear standards and can use a graded approach, meaning they can assess lower risk suppliers without forcing full ISO 19443 compliance on everyone. Example. A food truck servicing workers near a nuclear facility won't need full certification, but its sanitation logs, driver training, and vehicle maintenance, all subject to audit. It's a smart compromise, protecting safety while keeping small businesses in the game. But it also creates dependency. SMEs will rely on prime contractors to vouch for them, and that gives big players enormous leverage. The long-term fix, Australia must train its own auditors, build sovereign regulatory capacity, and stop relying on foreign experts to sign off on its national defense. So where does this leave Australia? On one side, a historic opportunity. AUKUS could turn Australia into a regional nuclear submarine hub, assembling SSN AUKUS boats, maintaining US and UK subs, and becoming a trusted pillar of Indo-Pacific security. On the other, a bureaucratic minefield. Multiple nuclear zones, Adelaide, Stirling, possibly Henderson or an East Coast base, will each need licenses, safety systems, and oversight. If the regulatory framework is too rigid, it could delay projects by years and price out local suppliers. 
This isn't just about building submarines. It's about building a nuclear culture from the boardroom to the dockyard. If Australia gets it right, it graduates from junior partner to strategic powerhouse. If it fails, the dream sinks, not from enemy fire, but from paperwork. So what do you think? Is this Australia's ticket to the big leagues or a slow motion trap dressed up as progress? Let us know in the comments. Smash that like button like it's a reactor scram switch, subscribe for more no BS breakdowns of global defense, and share this video so more people see how nuclear ambition and red tape are colliding down under. This is Military Forces Unleashed. No hype, no mercy. See you in the next one.